Well guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And today, as you see in the title, we are canning smoked pork tenderloin. And that's the focus of the video today. So I have in my pan over here, I have a pot, oh, this is a six quart, or this is a five quart, sorry. There's about three and a half to four quarts of homemade barbecue sauce, and that's a sweet and smoky, kind of a molasses-based barbecue sauce. I've got my All-American uh, 921 canner up um, on the counter, and these pork tenderloins smoked on the big green egg for two and a half hours. So two and a half hours later, we have uh, absolutely wonderful. And I'm going to cut these into chunks. These are not cooked all the way through, but I've got a nice pink smoke ring on this. Let's see, the, this end would be all the way through. And we've already sampled it. It's delicious. So, what a nice thing to have on your shelf. And you don't want to go further than that because we don't need them fully cooked. They're going to complete the cooking process in the canner. And I want some of the moisture content of the meat itself to be in here. Um, this is about medium to medium rare. Um, so totally okay to eat it. Some of the thicker pieces might be done a little bit less. I've also got some skirt steak out there on the big green egg. So um, I'll try to leave you some links down below for uh, my Cuisinart contour pot and or my... Um, pressure canner. The All-American pressure canners are the Cadillac canners, I'm telling you. So that's all I'm going to do. And when I get ready to fill my jars, I am going to put the meat in with the barbecue sauce. So then all I have to do is, when we want barbecue pork, open up a jar of meat. And I'm canning these in one pint jars. That's plenty of meat for a meal for Michael or I and without wasting and um, and we're using Zacon um, pork tenderloins. I ordered a case of 32 pounds and I got that while I was on vacation. And now um, we have uh, a freezer full and I thought, you know, I'm gonna freeze up, free up some space, also make some quick meals to have on hand. And um, I, I smoked off seven tenderloins. Each package has two in there. And down in the about section below, you'll see where I have um, the information for Zacon. So you can go over there and sign up for free. They'll email you when they have an event in your area and what products they might have available for you. Um, it's a way to get deep discounted meats in bulk and super easy. Anyways, I do have a couple of videos on how I picked it up and, and what the process is on ordering. So you can search for those if you'd like. And Okay, so this is all I'm doing. I'm cutting it into chunks, just like this. You know, we're really into one inch cubes maybe, maybe an inch and a quarter. And we'll get all these cut up and then I'll bring you back and we'll show you how we jar them up. So now we're ready to go ahead and jar the meat up. I've got my barbecue sauce here and I make it a little thinner than, it's like tomato sauce consistency. I make it a little thinner than I normally would because I want it to get around all the pieces of meat. If you wanted to thicken it up after you open the jar, that's totally fine. Just use a cornstarch slurry and you're good to go. So I've got my lids and these are, the white mouth are the orchard road lids and um, you do have to heat these up. If you do not heat them like the ball lids tell you, these will not sail, seal. You will have a, um, 50% failure rate is what I got out of it. So you're literally just gonna pack these um, jars with the meat. You're definitely gonna have to debubble. So I've got my debubble tool and I'm gonna pack one far away and then I'll bring you in close and pack one up close. And these jars are still pretty hot so they're not gonna be um, thermal shocked with the hot barbecue sauce and the meat's like at room temperature. So get yourself a ladle of barbecue. Mmm. Yum. Oh, I can't wait for this to be on my shelf. So we're gonna go ahead and debubble. Make sure you get all around all the meat. You wanna get 
the meat should be all submerged in the barbecue and perfect inch of headspace. And that is just about perfect. There we go. Every bit is covered. It looks beautiful. I'm gonna grab a napkin. Now I soak my lids in a vinegar water. So it's just a little extra sanitary. And then if you get anything on the rim of your jar, it'll cut through that sugar or oil, whatever's on there. Okay, now we'll pop a lid on there, a flat. These are button top lids. I also like to use Tatler lids, but I am gonna give some of this away. Finger tight, that's really all you need. It's absolutely beautiful, so I'm gonna bring you in close so you can see. So I wanted to show you how beautiful this is in the jar. It's absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful. Ugh. Okay, this is gonna go in the hot canner, which is about the same temperature as this water, um, until I get all the jars filled. And I will be double stacking pints. So here again, we're gonna go ahead and put some meat down in here. And this is a perfect size for a lunch, an easy sandwich for um, a couple sandwiches whole pork sandwiches, or you could just put this over rice or pasta, whatever floats your boat as far as pulled pork with a side of coleslaw, mm-hmm, yum. Okay, so that's about right. Let's get this out, kind of out of the way here. And we're going to add our barbecue sauce. And oh my gosh, so good. And if you did not debubble, it'd have a hard time getting down in the bottom here. Um, you really need to make sure that you get your wand down in there and push around in the center as well because we want to make sure that that sauce is completely over the top of the meat and still giving you an inch of headspace. Perfect and wipe your jar. The rim is what we're concerned with, just up here. And I've already inspected all my jars um, before they go in the dishwasher, I re-inspect. They get inspected over and over again after washing, after everything. Um, if I ever feel like I have a chip jar, it goes in the recycle, okay. This goes in the canner and we'll be back when I have the canner full. I'll let you know um, if I have room, I'm gonna put some smoked uh, skirt steak in there. So hopefully I have room anyway. I'll okay, have. so I definitely have enough room in the canner. I did 11 pints and it would have been probably 12 or 13, but we kept that little tenderloin back. Um, and I've got over here some beef base, bouillon. Um, better than bouillon and I add a little bit of kitchen bouquet for added flavor so on my cutting board I have the skirt steak that I smoked and it's just I mean you can see this is what it looks like it's got a really nice smoky flavor on it it'll make for great fajitas quick night quick weeknight fajitas and um, I just cut them into strips that would go well in a taco shell they may or may not keep that um, shape once you take them out. You know, they're going to shred pretty easy. And then I'm putting the hot broth down over that to keep that meat under liquid. And to me, it's really important. I want to debubble with my debubbler and get, make sure that all the air pockets are out because that would change your headspace. So we don't want that to happen. And wipe the rim of my jar. And I've got some nice, fresh, hot lids. Because after you've done, you know, three or four um, lids, uh, it, or you know, three or four jars, the lids start cooling down. So I like to put fresh, fresh hot water. Okay, fingertip tight. And if this doesn't fill the canner, I might put a couple of beans in there, some black beans, but there, isn't that beautiful? It's gonna have a nice smoky flavor. 
All right, guys, and you could actually make a quick little stew with that as well. And I'll see you in Okay, the guys, so the canner has come down off of pressure, and this pressure canned at 15 pounds of pressure for 75 minutes. And that's because these are pint jars. And so I want to... I, I take the lid and kind of cock it off to the side for about 10 minutes after I've taken the weight off and uh, let the thumb screws down because I don't want it to come down off of pressure and heat too fast or we'll lose liquid. And so here's beautiful. That's how much or how the pork looks right now. It's still boiling in the jars and it's just gorgeous. So. I see a little bit of liquid in there, but not not too bad. In fact, I'm gonna, so I don't get my nice. And this is the beef in the beef broth. So the skirt steaks. So I hope this inspires you to try your hand at home canning. It's very rewarding. It is healthy for your family. You know what's in it. You know how hard you worked for it to get in those jars and you have, I have 14 meals ready to go whenever I want to put over rice, pasta, put them in a, a tortilla and make a, a beef fajitas. And I hear popping going on. So we've, we've got some jars sealing up, which is really nice. And I double stack these jars. So let me bring All right, that so we have animal. 11 jars of the pork with the barbecue sauce and three of the um, skirt steaks all smoked on the big green egg and it just smells fantastic. I can't wait to try this. And as always guys, I hope it inspires you to try your hand, your own hand, home canning. Get yourself a good resource book. There's plenty online you can look up for free um, and follow the guidelines that are given by the National uh, Food Preservation um, website or the ball canning book. And um, start putting some stuff back on your shelf and quit buying that stuff in a tin can. It's never good for you anyway. All right, guys, we'll see you next time on another delicious recipe canning session or maybe a really fantastic vlog. All right, bye.